this is about the fourth nakshatra rohini uh, the lord of the nakshatra is moon so it's going to be very interesting to read about it as it talks about mind the moon rohini nakshatra falls here which is the first second third and this is the fourth rashi and it it occupies the entire re taurus or rishabha rashi unlike kirtika which cuts here mrugashira which cuts here so all the four padas of it are going to be there in uh, taurus and this the lord of it is moon so you can uh, expect lot of uh, moon related which is mind related thing with this being the second uh, rashi to the kala purusha so you can think about all that comes with like with the mouth region for eating food so all the, like they they can become cooks no things like that is what you can decipher from this this is something that it's important to note is it takes around 27.33 days to go across the zodiac that's how you get Uh, 27 nakshatras the moment you see the word called rohini you should remember lord krishna's wife rohini she is described as beautiful round face bright good in cooking okay, this is what you should remember and when you physically see moon you generally go calm and you some people see a mother feeding a baby some people see a rabbit standing there or whatever it may be everything is goes with calmness okay. and uh, it makes you light when you the moment you see the moon when you see the moon in the night whatever face it might be uh, you feel a bit calm down toned down and you start relaxing so that is what you should expect from rohini nakshatra there's a quite a interesting story about uh, rohini here uh, prajapati daksha had 27 daughters and he agreed to give it to moon chandra on one condition that he will spend equal time with all the 27 daughters of his so marriage took place very nicely and in a grand manner and then what happened was then there was the more moon was so engrossed with rohini's character beauty that he used to spend more time with her compared to the other 26 daughters this sparked out jealousiness between the other 26 wives and they went to his their father prajapati daksha and complained saying that this is what us moon doing and daksha got angry because the commitment was that he will spend equal time with everybody and out of this anger daksha gives a curse saying that you will lose your luster and uh, that brings down chandra to a very low level because that's the only thing that he had the very bright you know beautiful looking person you make him dull so he is very unhappy with that then the other gods come in intervene and they talk to daksha and says please consider your curse and give him some relief then daksha realizes that uh, he is unwantedly too angry and so he says okay i'll give you one thing i'll give you you should uh, you will dim and then you will bright okay so 15 days you will you will go down that is the brightness will go down or will wane and another 15 days he will be uh, in the bright stage he will go up in the stage and that's how you get the tithis okay there is so 14 14 not days uh, he will from the full moon to the no moon he will come from the no moon to full moon again he will come so this is what uh, this is what is been granted to him so from that day onwards 
moon has got this phases going on. So he becomes dull and then becomes bright. So interestingly, so when he waxes, when he wanes. So both the things is what people see and this is how we also can reflect our moods. Our moods are never stable. They move up, they move down. Okay, as the season passes, as the time passes, that's how we move on. Interestingly, moon is also seen as uh, the soul bearer. The heart, in Tamil they call prana kalacham. So, when the moon is weak, that is what they say, the soul leaves the body. And uh, interestingly, when we talk about, many people die during Amavasai. Amavasai, the no moon day. So, which is seen as the weakness of the heart where the soul can escape from that. Okay, that's one part of it that we have also have to keep in mind. <clears throat> so, basically when you talk about uh, Rohini Nakshatra, so you remember this story. And why he spent so much of time with Rohini? There's a scientific uh, reason for it which uh, in today's date they found out that it takes a longer time for the moon to cross Rohini physically. Though we have 30 degrees and uh, for this Rohini nakshatra it takes a longer time because the distance is higher. So for our convenience we have made it as equally divided but in real sense the distance is high so that's where the story comes in. So by technically knowing about it and by knowing through the story, it just signifies that moon spends more time in Rohini Nakshatra. So when moon spends more time in Rohini Nakshatra, the people with this Rasi, uh, with Nakshatra, will have more moon effect on them. Okay, moon related, that Karatva will come and affect them. And that's how we have to read the Rohini Nakshatra. Why Krishna has been given the moon? Because he was born in the Rohini Nakshatra. So Rohini Nakshatra is fully occupied in the Taurus uh, Rasi. So this planet uh, plays a major role depending on which Pada it has played. Because the four Padas in the same uh, Rasi, uh, they more or less have a same kind of character. But they change because the Pada changes and the D9 changes accordingly. Some of the, in the festivals, Rohini Vrat is uh, celebrated in many parts of India. So there is uh, Rohini Nakshatra is like you have some um, uh, mantras to chant. So that if your mind is not stable, then you can pray to this, chant this mantras and make it stable. Okay, look, we'll look into the mantras later on. That's the story. We are just looking at the Nakshatras. So the connection also we saw about Krishna and uh, Rohini because he was born there in that nakshatra. So it, that gives him that. So now what do, what do you see? What do you see with Krishna? Krishna has got number of, uh, he, he loved a lot of females. Okay, so it is not fixed to one. He loves a lot of men. So he is like, uh, very smoothly he will talk and he will do, he can handle many things in one shot. He is very artistic. He can play music. Okay, flute he can play. So he can uh, very intelligently work out many things. So he can be deceiving also at times. So now you look at uh, all the, take this, all these characters and you keep it in the mind so that when you are reading the chat, you will be able to uh, use these points for reason. So, if you are generally, there is one temple that is known to me. It's called Pandavadudar Temple in Kanjipuram. So, whenever this Rohini Nachatra is not in a good position, so we ask people to go to this temple, pray there, and come. Okay. So, it could be Avayogi, moon could have been Avayogi, or in that house could they, maybe the nakshatra is in the eighth house or the twelfth house moon is there so then we will ask them to go here and do a certain remedy and then come back so this is when you talk about rohini 
you immediately have to think about Krishna's wife for him. She was beautiful, had a round face, she knew how to cook well. So these are certain things that you should immediately remember. Some of us will see mother feeding a kid and when you see the moon, some of us will see a rabbit. And uh, we will feel very calm when we are under the moon. So basically it gives you the whole feeling of the moon, a motherly feeling where you calm down even in night times when you see a moon, you can, whenever, especially when it's a full moon. You really love seeing that and yes, what has it then done, you become very calm as if you are with your mother. So that is what Rohini Nachatra will reflect. Rohini as a name in Sanskrit means the red one. And uh, in the Greek uh, mythology also, it is, ref it is seen as a bull and the eye of the bull is seen as red. <clears throat> okay, so there is a planet that there is a star that is attached to that. That is not the point. The point is to see about Rohini. And uh, Rohini Nakshatra, when it falls in different Pada, there are four Padas in one Rasi, and uh, how does it uh, react? Okay, you have to understand that. So, Rohini falling in first Pada. <clears throat> so, it is governed by the Iris Rasi because the Navamsham falls there. And so, this Rasi is being governed by Mars. So, those who are born in this thing, they are uh, they, generally their hair is a bit reddish in color. They are daring, very cruel if you want to, if you see them as Mars is known for cruelty and uh, they are very outspoken. Okay, so that is one. And uh, they are creative and they are, because of the moon they are very creative but uh, creative in the actions kind of a role so probably they will be stunt guys. Uh, competitive they are good singers, motivations, okay, they make excellent deals. When you talk about singer, so they are a bit aggressive singers. That's how you have to take it because of the Mars. So you have to pick up something like that and then you say first Pada, these are the characters and also out of experience you learn a lot. But this is what at a 33,000 feet height, this is how you have to decipher first Pada. When you talk about the second Pada of Rohini, it falls with Venus. Why does it rule between them? Because it falls in the same house, Taurus. And Taurus is ruled by Venus. And remember that Venus rotates opposite to all the other planets. If everybody is running on the right, this guy is running on the left, turning on the left. So that's why we say men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Okay, both rotate in a different direction. So now keeping this in mind, so when you try to decipher this chart, you say second pada, so they are basically enjoyer because of the Venus effect. They are happy, they pray to God, they are and they welcome their guests, they take care of the guests. Okay, they take care of the guests when they come in. They are very calm, they are very calm because uh, and their mannerism is very good. They speak very good knowledge because Venus happens to be a knowledge planet. Uh, they always uh, try to find uh, happiness and uh, find to find uh, there is any security there. So they, they have a security problem. They always try to find where to be there safe. They always like to live a luxurious life more than what they can afford. Uh, they are materialistic in thought okay, because of the Venus effect. What happens is they are materialistic in thought and uh, they are good in collecting uh, materials keeping it for themselves to show off they are good uh, they keep their houses clean they decorate it very well with whatever they have so they are very imaginative but uh, a bit short tempered and uh, they are perfectionist they look for perfection in everything so this is what you can see from uh, second pada what I am saying is only a portion of it, but there are so many other things that you will have to pick it up by reading regular book. But what I am trying to tell you is the way you should read the chart, you should read the Padas. D9, you pick it up, you see what is the owner of that uh, D9, you look at where this particular nakshatra comes in. In Rohini case, it is sitting on the Venus's house, so you have to pick up 
you have to mix and match and then you have to pick up when it comes to third pada it falls uh, the d9 will fall on to gemini so when it falls into gemini mercury happens to be the uh, so what are the mercury's characteristics they will be good in mathematics because calculative analytics they will be good in or uh, speaking skills and quick uh, witted people so when you talk about all this thing then they will be moving quite fast from one place to another because of this mercury's capability so what they will uh, so they will be uh, pleasant minded because of the moon effect they will be learned because of mercury mercury is learned because mercury was thought by sun not by jupiter so he has knowledge from sun so he has got very good knowledge so and he has a habit of collecting things and keeping it and uh, they are very scientific uh, mathematically they are very good so many of the excellent mathematicians come from this particular nakshatra they are good in uh, uh, what you call materialistic uh, materialistic desires are not that great in them so what they do they are, they are good in that way and uh, they are uh, entrepreneurs they have they have a lot of business mind they bring up new things and they like to make quick uh, money by quick thinking and they have a good uh, network they are good for networking they get a lot of people in there and they have good creative skills also so they have a, they come from they, they are good in teaching art art teaching is very well with them and they they have mimicry mimicry is people who ever do mimicry they come from this particular pada so they like uh, you will see them working with the fast cars good uh, nice looking cars which are very agile so they start off a bit slow in their life but they end up very well in the later part of their life when it comes to fourth pada it, it's if d9 will fall on cancer which is moon so it is controlled by moon so this pada they are more uh, they like uh, fourth house right so they like their houses they like properties they like to store things they are intuitive they are very sensitive because of the moon in uh, moon moon's character falling on them they are very honest they are like motherly so they give uh, everything there it is uh, there are lot of emotions when they talk about something or when they give value to people there are lot of emotion and everything is connected with memory you will keep on thinking when they are, when they are speaking they will talk about something past and they'll recall that and they'll tell you they will connect with this they are artistic very artistic and their drawings are generally beautiful and uh, emotions they put a lot of emotions and uh, bit narrow minded they might also be in a good uh, they might be also good in cheating now this is a perfect fit for movie actors actor and actresses because it fits in the creativity they have the emotion they can modify themselves they can cheat they can uh, they can do lot of things okay so that's how you have to pick up this overall the whole nakshatra you can you can see many of this uh, movie field people falling into this nakshatra where they are where they are recognized and people know about them okay i think that would be a round up around about uh, rohini nakshatra so you will have to think in this angle like you have to pick up the d9 you have to pick up the lords of this d9s and you have to pick up uh, the lord of the house where the nakshatra is sitting and then you have to decipher put all the characters together and see where this uh, rohini nakshatra is falling in a particular person's house and how it will read whether it will be positive or whether it will be negative based on that is what you have to read the chart okay when it falls to nearly that would be for today from from me on rohini nakshatra let's meet uh, with uh, mirgashira in the next episode thank you have a good day bye bye